next request uh, Dr. Amandeep Singh, Professor uh, of the Ophthalmology at Advanced Eye Center, Postgraduate Institute of Ophthalmology, Chandigarh, um, to give his next talk on role of IOCT in macular surgeries. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks to uh, Dr. Ratra and uh, Dr. Bende for having me here at the wonderful Fifth Retina Summit meet. So, uh, people of my age uh, very well know that how the OCT has changed the face of uh, the VR. Uh, practice actually. So uh, what about the microscopic integrated uh, OCT? This has been there for last now a decade there, but it has not picked up uh, for various reasons. Uh, so uh, the, these studies have uh, shown that uh, intraoperative OCT does help in the decision making in quite a number of patients. I have the experience of using this uh, tool for more than a half a decade. So I'll be sharing my indications where I use it uh, 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 very often. And uh, I, 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 this is the indication number one, to identify the membranes interoperatively so that I can, I can reduce the uh, use of dye and don't have any uh, postoperative surprises. So this is a case where I have used, intentionally used the dye also there, interoperative OCT also. You'll see that how the interoperative OCT can do the same job what dye has been, uh, has been doing. And uh, this is uh, uh, where uh, uh, we uh, do these uh, often for the, uh, for, for the epiretal membranes and for making sure that there is no residual membrane and we run these OCTs. And similarly for the diabetic eyes where we, uh, the, uh, the, the skittic like picture is very, very common and we may leave behind membranes uh, which are pre uh, there already or, or, or which they form while we are taking care of the bleeders, the membrane form, you all know the secondary membranes. And OCT helps us to pick up the dissection planes uh, 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 because is there any space between uh, the retina and the membrane we are peeling. So it, 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 we have to do the work patiently. The, I think uh, the, uh, the lag time is, was earlier was there, now the, there's no lag time, but all you have to be a patient there and the surgical time, I would say, certainly increased a little bit. And you have to have an assistant which, uh, who is helping, helping you to keep the, uh, it in the field. But in the end, it is very, very, uh, you know, uh, it's, it, it's very gratifying there. Now, in the myopic eyes, I know that the media or, 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 or the OCD, the current OCTs are not very good tool. But yes, they do help in long eyes also. We are able to pick these ketic pictures like you'll see in, in this patient here. We left, the, but after the surgery, after we have peeled that, we am sure that we have not left any uh, uh, membrane uh, behind and this is possible with the intraoperative OCT. Subretal injections. I, I, I can imagine that one day there'll be a robotic arm who will, uh, which will be giving our intravitreal injections and the subretal injections, the way they're coming for the, uh, for, for the various therapies and uh, the, uh, that robotic arm will, uh, uh, will, uh, will have a needle there which will penetrate the eye and it will use MIOCT to find where to give this costly drug and it will not make a human error. This is where we are also using and people are now uh, showing the use of intraoperative OCT while they're making a bleb, a subretinal bleb and uh, giving the drug in the uh, right, uh, right place. That is very important. And this is a case we have injected TPA there. And of course, uh, I, I, a fellow there, uh, a fellow in my OT uh, can use these uh, tools whenever he's in a dilemma. So my fellow was uh, operating late night uh, on a case like this in a, in a gray vitreous hemorrhage. Uh, 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 the fellow saw that this kind of a picture there, but uh, at my experience, somebody will say, it's, uh, well, it's, it's, it's a Tursen syndrome, but uh, she, uh, she smartly ran an OCT to saw that there is, uh, the, this is a lesion which is superficial to the, uh, uh, to the, to the macular layers and she could uh, easily go ahead and peel this membrane uh, uh, rather than calling me at night and what to do next. Uh, this is very important. And again, uh, uh, the peculiar situation we face, a macular hole whether the macular hole is there or not, just run an OCT. Don't use a dye to see that uh, the macular hole is there or somebody will take a green uh, tip there and create a hole there. And similarly, when, whenever you're in a dilemma, the same, you will run an OCT, you think that it's, it's a hole. Well, run an OCT to see uh, the hole is not there. So it's just, uh, it's, it's a very useful uh, tool for early in practice to say that whether the, uh, this kind of a picture is there or not. Of course, subretinal biopsy. 
uh, because we do a lot of uh, uveitis at our center. So we, uh, uh, whenever, you know, uh, uh, people have shown that if you want to make sure that the, you have taken the adequate material, you have taken the right material from the subbrittle space, you will see a tissue flowing into or if your flute needle. So this is this has people and done in the the lymphoma cases and the melanomas. Wherever they're taking a subretinal biopsy, they're running MI OCT just to make sure that things are at the right place and this thing. We have extended our use and uh, because we don't have an uh, OCT in, uh, for the children in the OR, and this is what we found out that with the exo illumination, you know, we can we don't have to take a a, a light pipe into the eye, and with the exo illumination, you can. Uh, do an OCT of these uh, children. You just have to put a wide angle lens and X illumination and just be patient and you'll be able to see uh, these small kids, uh, their normal uh, uh, foveal anatomy is not there and you will see a case where uh, there was a trauma, uh, we were suspecting a battered baby and uh, this can be seen with, in, a, in, a, in a, you don't have to have a, you know, if, if you don't have a uh, OCT in the, for the kids, you can run this OCT. Of course, we've been using uh, uh, this tool for the uh, for a long time for the uh, for, uh, for, uh, for the macro holes for the pits and uh, whatever we're putting in the uh, uh, in, in these holes, whether it's going to the right place or not. Uh, now, I, I, this is my indication number six, and this is just uh, uh, my uh, initial experience with the. Uh, this is the neurosensory uh, graft we took. Uh, th these were the earlier drays when we used to take it from the periphery. This was the RDI uh, with a with a large macro hole. And uh, this is just a, uh, visually it looks very good. And we published with Dr. Ratra also this technique that uh, doing, uh, using an MIOCT to make sure that uh, this is in the right place. Uh, but this can be uh, one of the indication for, uh, for the MIOCT. And of course, uh, the uh, cost is a big issue. I think because of the cost and uh, not many players into the uh, interoperative uh, OCT area, the, this has not become very popular like uh, like our you know the main OCT which is there in our clinics. It is going to come because it is going to stay there and uh, and of course the resolution, the kind of resolution we see with our SS OCTs, we don't see that kind of resolution here. But uh, again, the resolution will uh, improve. And difficulty in myopic eyes as we face in our clinics, it will be taken care of once the resolution improves. And the shadowing of the instruments is, is there, but you can always learn to how to uh, get around these. Uh, thank you so much for your patient. Thank you, Dr. Ramandeep, for uh, telling us where all you would use IOCT for macular surgeries.